think now we should be proceeding for the question and uh, answers. Anybody got any question? Thank you so much, Dr. Anwar. The question for Dr. Anwar, um, just regarding the pediatric psoriatic arthritis, how, how common or how do you find it in comparison to adult uh, psoriatic arthritis? So, um, as I've already mentioned, it's thought to happen around 40% with those who have um, uh, severe uh, psoriasis, cutaneous psoriasis. Uh, I don't think I see it as common as in, uh, in adults. Um, I would definitely screen with, for, uh, for every patient. I can, say, I can definitely say that it is less commonly seen in uh, the pediatric population in comparison to adults' population, uh, but I can definitely see the, um, the association. And uh, as, the, as one of the great speakers mentioned, that sometimes you start with only cutaneous psoriasis, you put the patient on uh, the biologic therapy that is uh, depending on the case, and you might be masking psoriatic arthritis. So that's what comes always to my mind, that maybe starting the biologic at an earlier, um, uh, yes, uh, earlier point at the course of the disease might be masking the psoriatic arthritis that was supposed to happen at some point. Uh, my question is uh, for Dr. Yasser. Thank you so much for the great presentation. Uh, so can I, is it possible to label a patient with having psoriatic arthritis before presenting with any skin or nail changes? Sorry, can you repeat your question again? I didn't hear you. Can I label a patient having psoriatic arthritis before presenting with psoriatic lesions, cutaneous or nail changes? Excellent. So I love the questions. This is a challenging usually case that we face in uh, rheumatology yes you can so if you have a patient come with oligarthritis with a strong family history of psoriasis we know when they come to our clinic they don't have an active psoriasis they may have psoriasis in the past was treated or they have a strong family history so if the clinical symptoms is highly suggestive of psoriatic arthritis with a strong family history or history suggestive of psoriasis yes i would label that patient having a psoriatic arthritis Thank you. My question to Dr. Yasser, I only, I want to take a, uh, still, uh, like a joke. I ask my patient psoriasis, are you have joint pain? And I have joint pain on all my joints. It is very silly practice, but I do. So, we uh, the dermatologist or physician to the Alhamdulillah. Whatever. Uh, female, I, I predict a patient always tell, you have joint pain. I asked about uh, axial uh, arthritis, and she said yes. I have low back pain. I have neck pain. I have elbow. So yes, yes, yes. So my question is: Is there is a screening uh, lab workup? We are uh, poor in diagnosis of arthritis as dermatologist. Uh, easier for us to make like screening workup, blood test. Uh, if you have any uh, clue or any guidelines in that, uh, regardless of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, with our poor uh, knowledge, uh, there is zero negative. Yani patient may be have rheumatoid arthritis and with rheumatoid factor negative. Um, I do rheumatoid factor active protein and usually they're normal. So if you give, if you have answers to this, you will help us so much. Thank you, Dr. Yes. So this is a great question. Uh, do I have a blood test to help you out in the clinic? No, I don't. So when a patient comes with psoriasis and they have pain, so you usually have to differentiate the three different things. So I have inflammatory pain, that's the synovitis, enthesitis, ductilitis. I have a mechanical pain from osteoarthritis because they have inflammatory arthritis for a long time. That's your pain when you're walking on the stairs or when you're moving. And they also have centralized pain. These patients have, a lot of them have fibromyalgia. So it's not easy for the patient and also for us as rheumatologists to differentiate between the three. 
I think one of the main challenges we have within these randomized controlled trial, and that's why we're having a minimum of these activity being so low, it's only 30 to 40 percent of patients with psoriatic arthritis and achieve minimum of these activity, and even these big ch biologic agents, because we try, we have so much overlap between this. All, all I want you to do in the clinic, you have a patient, they have a multiple joint pain, tender point, maybe we're doing your best, best uh, screening, these five questions, just send them to us. To the, to the rheumatologist. Even if they don't have psoriatic arthritis, they will probably help them with the, with the pain overall, dealing with centralized fibromyalgia. We can give some advice and then tell them you can go back to your dermatologist saying you probably don't have psoriatic arthritis, but you have fibromyalgia and we are addressing the fibromyalgia either pharmacologically or non-pharmacologically by doing physical rehab, exercise, and other modalities. This is a great question. Many thanks for your presentation and many thanks for Dr. Anwar also. Dr. Anwar gave us last match, it was very good, screening about the hypertension, diabetes, and screening for detection of psoriatic arthritis. Uh, what is your opinion about it? We can do screening ultrasound to detect subclinical psoriatic arthritis in patient with psoriasis. Another great question. So we're lucky right now in Kuwait that most of the secondary hospital have actually ultrasound machines. So it's available in all, Mubarak, Farwaniya, Jahra, everybody has ultrasound machine. It's a great tool to detect subclinical enthesitis. Enthesitis is not easy to diagnose clinical. It's actually better diagnosed with ultrasound. I just saw a patient in the clinic who has been on uh, to look in 17, the 150 milligram, and said, I went to a dermatologist and told me you probably should be in a 300, shouldn't be in 150. I said, I have no problem. I can increase the dose, but I want to see the sign. And he said, I have pain in my hand. When I look to his hand, I can't really see a clear sign of itis. I sent this patient for ultrasound machine. Ultrasound confirmed he had tenosine of itis and arthritis, and I gladly told him, okay, we're going to increase your to look in 17 from 150 to 300. So it's a great tool. Main challenges is depending where you practice. So in the in the government, it need time, so you can't really do it in your busy clinic. You have to get the patient name and may ask them to come back in another day and do that because it will take maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And in the private, the rheumatologist is not able to charge for it, so they can do it. It will take time from them, but they still cannot be paid for it. So that's the really challenge. But it's a great tool. Most of the rheumatologists now around the country are using it. I do have questions to Dr. Vendor. Um, just uh, wanted to ask, uh, since psoriasis is, is uh, systemic uh, inflammation, and we are highlighting the comorbidities of psoriasis, in Canada, how frequent do you screen for comorbidities, and what, what is the uh, investigations that you are doing? And. Um, Another question, uh, how easy the access to a rheumatologist in Canada, and do you have any collaboration with a rheumatologist? Is it easy to refer your patients to them? Thank you, thank you for the question. Uh, so I, I work in a medical building that has uh, about six rheumatologists, so for me it's easy. I just do a text and they can go downstairs and they can see them right away. So usually within a week or so, but they do, can do the same for me. So if they have something, they can send a text and I will see them right away. Plus we recruit for clinical trials. So, uh, but that varies. Canada is a big, big country. We have six time zones and it takes around seven to eight hours to fly across the country. So it's very big and every place has a different access to rheumatologists. So it's, they're not all as lucky as me. And when we have meetings, everyone says, uh, I wish I, I had a rheumatologist like Ron Vender has a rheumatologist. Um, so that part's good. Screening, I screen uh, before biologic like we all do. But, and then in terms of comorbidities, I do uh, blood work every year, once a year only and I tell the patient that it's only 
uh, screening for the blood work because of comorbidities, not because of the biologic. And I ask about psoriatic arthritis every visit. And even if they come every two months or if they come every six months, I ask every visit. And I normally ask about the simple thing, do you have joint pain? I don't do anything more than that uh, because I'm getting a lot of fibromyalgia and osteoarthritis. But at least I ask. And then if they say I have a sore elbow because I hurt myself, that's another story. Uh, so the uh, comorbidities once a year, and I put a note to the doctor so that they understand that. And but psoriatic arthritis as often as they come to visit. Thank you. Such a little microphone. Any more questions? I think we will be concluding our uh, uh, conference today and um, please for our esteemed speakers if you can come forward.